Okay, so guys, this is the second of the two of the uh, videos uh, that go with the nervous system physiology. Uh, this is going to cover slides 9 through 19. Um, and the big focus is going to be on the two types of cells, um, which are going to be the neuroglia and the neurons. Okay, so uh, neuroglia and neurons. So we've talked about this early in the year. Okay, nervous tissue or neural tissue, okay, uh, composed of two types of cells. You've got the neuroglia which are the general helper cells. We're going to show you exactly how they help in just a moment. And the neurons are the ones that actually send the signal. So those are two big categories. We're going to talk about each of them individually here. All right. So neuroglia um, make about half the volume of the nervous system. Remember, they're the only ones that actually go through cell division. They're the only ones that actually go through mitosis and divide. Um, and they do not send signals, but they help maintain. So this is often what you see, maintain the nervous tissue and assist the neurons. Um, let me show you specifics here. So let's go to the next one. Okay. So Big overhead, guys. If I remembered, I printed out this out full size for you because it is so important. Okay. Notice the division. Okay. So found in. So this half over here is peripheral nervous system. This half is central nervous system. So that's important. All right. So let's talk peripheral nervous system. Okay. So two big types of cells. Um, the satellite cells. Okay. These satellite cells. Um, they are kind of maintain the environment, guys. So they kind of surround, they help support a little bit. Um, they regulate all the things like oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients and all the other things that are needed around it. So they kind of maintain the environment around um, the neurons, okay? So they're going to maintain everything around the neurons, okay? Um, the Schwann cells, okay, it's a fun word, Schwann. Okay, so the Schwann cells um, surround the axons. Okay, so they they produce what's called myelin. Myelin is going to be really important. We're going to talk a ton about myelin um, uh, in this next unit, guys. We're going to talk about it as we get further along. But this myelin here is what allows us to send the signals fast. Okay, so um, we need this myelin wrapped around it to be able to send the signals very quickly. All right, so let's talk central nervous system. So we actually have pretty much the exact same cells um, for the central nervous system, okay? So we have oligodendrocytes, kind of a mouthful, but you just pronounce every letter in there, guys, not so bad. They do the exact same thing. They make myelin, okay? So they make myelin, all right? So Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes, same thing, guys, all right? So they're the same, okay? In fact, let's do this. Equal. Okay, just two different places. So Schwann cells are peripheral nervous system and the oligodendrocytes are central. Okay. Satellite cells. Remember we said the satellite cells over here, okay, help maintain the environment. Well, over here we have the exact same ones. Um, they are called astrocytes, and they get their name because they're kind of star shell shaped. Astrocytes, okay? And they pretty much do the exact same thing. They're a little bit more of a physical structure than the satellite cells. But everything else down here, if you read through it, it's pretty much the same stuff. They maintain the gases, they maintain all the nutrients, they maintain all the waves, so they do all those types of things. So those two, okay, are pretty much a pair, okay? Just peripheral versus central, all right? Um, the last two, okay? Epidemal, okay, are essentially the epithelial cells, um, so they make linings, okay, so they make linings. You'll see lines, ventricles, lines, ventricles, sorry, it's hard to underline when it's that small, okay, so they line ventricles, lines the cerebral spine of fluid, uh, there's all sorts of stuff, but you can think, just think of it as a lining, okay, and then the microglia, okay, the microglia down here, they're essentially white, uh, they're essentially like a white blood cell, guys, um, uh, you'll recognize the very last word on here. They get rid of waste and cell debris by phagocytosis. That means they swallow up anything, any, um, bacteria, virus, a dead cell, um, anything that's damaged, they swallow it up and get rid of it. Okay? So these are your six types of neuroglia. Okay? Um, really important that you guys differentiate between peripheral versus central. Okay? So you're going to need to work on that. Um, the easy way, a little tip for you, the two that start with S, satellite and Schwann. Those are your peripherals. So if you can keep those straight in some way, match those two up, everything else tends to work out okay. But you will want to know um, what each of these uh, neuroglia specifically do when it comes time for our first quizzes. All right, let's move on. Okay, nice little picture here for you, trying to show you a couple of them. So here's um, this up in the top right. There's fluid up here called the cerebral spot of fluid. So this is an open space, and you have a lining right along the edge here made of epidemo. Remember, that's like an epithelial. Okay. Um, this is going to be in the central nervous system, so we're not going to have the satellite or schwans, um, but we will 
get to see the oligodendrocyte, which is not labeled in here. Um, so this guy right here is an oligodendrocyte, and he's making myelin. You can see he's wrapping myelin right around right there, and more myelin right around right there. I'm going to clear those out so you can see it a little bit better. Um, and then you have right here the microglia. Remember the microglia is the one that goes and fights infections. Okay, so this guy right here in the middle here is a microglia. He's going to look for infections and clean that up. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's what we're looking at. Okay, let's move on. Alright, so the part we're going to spend most of this unit on is talking about the neurons. Okay, so the neurons, obviously, they send the signals. They're in our eyes the most important part. Okay, so they're often referred to as the basic functional units because they're the ones that can actually send the signals. Okay, so here's a big overview. We're going to actually get into all these different pieces like axon and, and dendrite and cell body and all this kind of stuff. We'll get to all this um, through the next few slides, but I want to give you a big overview to start with. Alright, so neurons. Um, they can be classified, if we were to classify neurons by structure, and that's important, guys. If we were to classify neurons by structure, this is what we would do. So this is by structure. And if it's not on your slide, write it on your slide. I'm hoping I correct it before I print this out for you guys. All right? So um, the axon is the big, long branch, guys. So you can see an axon over here, and an axon over here, and an axon here, and an axon here. This one does not have an axon, so it's got lots of little branches out here on the edges, okay? Um, but it's called an axonic because it doesn't have it, okay? And this bipolar, bi means two, so you've got a cell body, okay, with two big branches coming up. You've got one end that becomes the dendrite, and the other ends up being the axon of that neuron, okay? Um, on this one over here, this one's considered unipolar, and it's not a great picture, guys, but if you look closely, you have the cell body here. I'm going to do my own little picture off on the side. The cell body, then there's a branch that comes off, and then it splits. Okay, So they call this unipolar because there's just one little branch right there, and then it splits into the two um, pieces. So you get, end up having axon, dendrites. It's, that's what you're looking at. Okay, um, So the signal will be received here at the dendrites, and it would fly right on by. It wouldn't even have to pass through um, uh, the cell body. It would pass right by. And then the most common one in the brain and spinal cord is called the multipole. This is your classic neuron. If you look at a picture in the book, it's almost always going to look like this. Um, you've got a cell body, also called the soma, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you've got all these dendrites around the outside. And all these dendrites are the receiving part, lots of branches, so they can receive signals from this neuron or this neuron or this neuron or this neuron, all the way around. Lots of different spots that can send signals in here. Um, and then it's going to be passed down through the cell body and then down the axon down here and we're going to end up, that's where we'll release the neurotransmitters to the to another neuron or to a muscle or to a gland okay so why do we have all these different structures guys well we have all these different structures because if by having them they can do different things you know this one doesn't send the signal very far okay it's got lots of inputs but it's not going to send the signal very far these two guys both of these guys are kind of like highways. They, they get the signal and they just pass it on straight line real quick, just send it from one, uh, so they're kind of like messengers, okay? This one is the one that does the classic processing because it has so many inputs, you can send it lots of information, and then the resulting work is then sent out this way. All right, so um, they all serve slightly different functions, and that's why they have slightly different anatomies, all right? So if we were to classify by function, so the last page, remember, was structural, classifications. If you classify by function, we have three different types. We have sensory, which are afferent. They take signals in, okay? So these are going to carry signals in. Motor neurons, okay, which are efferent, and they're going to carry signals out. And then the interneurons are within the central nervous system. So, uh, so for instance, if we were to, um, let's go back to uh, somebody taps you on the shoulder. Good example for it, okay? The, you would first feel that, okay, your sensory information would take it in, and then in your brain you would process it, okay, and then your motor command would be like, hey, so the processing would be like, oh, somebody tapped me on the shoulder, or oh, I know that game, some, some, uh, somebody's being a funny guy and they're tapping me on my right shoulder and they're over on the left, but you're in response, whether you turn to your right or to your left, that's the motor command. It sends a signal out to the muscles, okay, so you'd end up kind of feeling it first, usually it kind of works this way, you feel it, process it, and then respond. And that's usually how the process works. Now, 
So parts of the, anat uh, the anatomy of a neuron that we want to know, guys. So the anatomy of a neuron, anatomy. Okay. Um, we've got the cell body, all of this in blue here. And that's the fancy word for that is the soma. We've got these short branches off on the side here. These are called the dendrites, and that's going to be the receiving portion. And then you got the big long axon that goes all the way down here, um, and that's going to be our sending portion. Okay, uh, the end of the axon, you often see this word called telodendria. They're just the spot where we actually release the neurotransmitters. We'll get to more on that as we go, but those are your big portions. Okay, um, typically in terms of organelles, they have most of the same organelles as other cells, guys, but they have a, a couple different things. They have a little bit larger nucleus because remember the nucleus has the um, uh, directions for making everything. You need lots of directions for making all the neurotransmitters. Um, we call the cytoplasm, again, just annoying vocab, is called the perikaryon, okay? We got tons of mitochondria in there because we need energy for the cells. Um, rough endoplasmic reticulum, that's what RER stands for, remember, rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes are to make proteins, and in particular, a neurotransmitter, a neuron needs lots of neurotransmitters, so you have lots of these, okay? And then you got cytoskeleton, you got those neurofilaments, remember um, microfilaments and microtubules, we just call them my, uh, neurofilaments and neurotubules, um, and all they do is they kind of hold everything together, they provide support, uh, so if you go back, all these little branches out here need some support to hold their shape, this needs support to hold its shape, so we use these neurofilaments and neurotubules to kind of hold the shape together. All right. Um, last couple of features, guys. Um, we have the endoplasmic reticulum that we just talked about is often referred to as the nissel bodies because there's big, dark, gray areas in there, and that's actually what kind of uh, makes the, a lot of nervous, nervous tissue appear gray. We call it gray matter, right? Um, the dendrites we've already mentioned, they're the really short, highly branched. Um, and again, they are the receiving portion, probably the most important part, guys, the receiving portion. All right? And then the axon okay, is much longer. Um, and uh, the axon is going to carry uh, the electric signals out and away, and really this is going to be the sending portion. So the axon is the sending, and I don't really have that in there, and you guys should write that in someplace. So it's going to be the sending portion. And that's where you'll often see the myelin that we talked about that helps the signals go faster and the gaps called the nodes of Ranvier. So those are two important vocab words that we want to squeeze in. All right. All right. So in this last little picture, just a big overview for us, guys. Or, and we've got our soma, right? So this whole portion will be called the soma, right in there with a nice nucleus in the middle, right? Um, all these little dots, that's the nissel bodies. Remember, those are protein factories, uh, particularly neurotransmitter factories. All these branches on the outside up here are dendrites, so the receiving portion. So typically, if another neuron was right here, it would have its axon come down to the end with lots of little branches, release neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters would bind in here, and that would cause another signal. Okay? And then the signal would go this way, down along this axon. Okay? And the last thing we're going to talk about is if you were to see myelin on here, the axon would actually look like this. It would actually be covered up and there'd be a layer of myelin wrapped around it. Okay, so this would be myelin wrapped around this axon. And the gap in between where there is no myelin, that is called the nodes, N-O-D-E-S, of Ranvier. All right, that didn't work. Hold on. So nodes of Ranvier, sorry. Apologize for my awful writing up there, but that ought to help you a little bit more. So, nodes of Rambier. All right, so that's our neuron and neuroglia um, little video, guys. Uh, remember the neuroglia, the helpers, they do everything else. They kind of maintain all the environment. The neurons are the ones that send the signals, and really, everything else we're going to do in this unit is how do they send the signals, and how does the brain interpret the signals. So, we're going to spend a whole lot of time on that whole process, and we're going to deal with a little bit more, um, a lot about with axons and dendrites as we move along. All right.